Hello, welcome to this video. One of my most popular videos I've ever done is how to use QuickBooks. And I try and make sure we do it as efficiently as possible, but it's getting a little bit dated. And the reason it's getting a little bit dated is QuickBooks keeps evolving. It's a cloud-based solution, keeps changing, keeps evolving, everything else. So we're gonna quickly put together a bit of a, let what you must know, what's the most important things for you to know about QuickBooks Online so that you can understand it. And my aim is to make sure this is under 10 minutes long. So let's not waste any time. Let's go straight into it. Roll the VT and figure out exactly how to use QuickBooks Online, hopefully under 10 minutes. Let's see. Hello, my name is Aaron Patrick. I am a Chartered Accountant, a certified UK trainer with a fancy new logo. That QuickBooks chap on the internet, head of accounts here at Buffix, and also your friendly podcaster who goes live each and every Monday morning for Ask the account you need to know anything about the world of QuickBooks, you're in the right place, so why not give us a little subscribe? So in this video, we're gonna be talking about QuickBooks Online and what it's all about. So let's go straight into it and understand it. Now, first thing to look at is the dashboard. Dashboard itself, really straightforward. It's what you're gonna to go to when you first get into QuickBooks. It's gonna give you some information, like there may be some tasks for you to do. Keep an eye on that task area, gonna make sure you're on top of QuickBooks. There's some shortcuts and we can edit these shortcuts as well. So we can go in, edit them and add more different type of shortcuts as you want. Try and think of the shortcuts as an area of almost like a to-do list. What do you have to do or what do you need to do on a regular basis? Really useful. The bank accounts is by far my favorite bit about the dashboard. From here, you can go in there, see what, what's going on, click into your bank, go straight into it, get some stuff done. And if you've got your bank connected as well, unfortunately I don't on this demo account, those two figures will hopefully be the same. And if they're the same, then you're saying you've got £179.68 in your bank and £179.68 in your QuickBooks itself. What key things do you need to know about the world of QuickBooks so that you can use it? First of all, if you need to send invoices out, and bear in mind on this one, I am using a simple start version of QuickBooks. It's the lowest version of QuickBooks Online currently available. And I've used that particularly so we can really just look at the focus on the main information that's there. So for example, if I was to raise an invoice, when I'm raising an invoice in QuickBooks, I need to give it some key information. You can set it up to payment options, like it's telling me here, to accept card payments and even set up direct debit. And I can even set automatic reminders, but I don't need to know about from that for now. What I do need to know is what customer I'm sending information to. So let's do Aaron test, press save. And if I'd have filled out all that information there, date, address, all that sort of stuff, that will then start appearing here for me and make my life easier. So I can go and do that at any point by going back to my customer area and editing the Aaron test area. And then I have an option to bring in products and services. Sales is the only one that's available to me at the moment. I can add new ones if I need to. But the idea then is let's put some sales in for a thousand pound. For this one, I have turned VAT on, but VAT will actually come as standard off. So if you need to add VAT, I've done a separate video on how to do that. But for this one, let's just see what happens when VAT is on. So I'm having to add what my VAT rate is and it will calculate the VAT for me. And the reason I turn VAT on is just, just show how simple it is. If you're not that registered, don't worry about this VAT element of it. But if you are, have that peace of mind that VAT is just gonna be sorted for you. And that's a really good thing. Right, I can then save and send at the bottom, save and close, save and share link or save and share as WhatsApp. Using this little arrow here, I choose what I want to do next. Save and send means I'm going to save it and then it's going to send to whoever it is if I put an email address in. Save and close means I'm saving it and closing back where I was. Save and new means I'm saving it and giving myself a new one to put on. And save and share link and save and what that? Well, save and share link means you get a copy of a link to send by whatever email you want. And save and share by WhatsApp means it's going to send it by WhatsApp for you. We love that. Right, let's for this one save and close. So I can save the next bit. Now, what do I, how do I look at those invoices and, and work with them? So under my sales area, I have an overview screen. I highly recommend to go to the overview at the very beginning because you can go through setting things up like card payments, direct debits and things like that. We also have the um, customers area from here where I can go into any customer I like, just like the one I've done there, use the edit button to keep them up to date and then I can see what they may or may not owe me. So quickly glance down here, I'm still owed that £1,200. So at this point, I can either mark as paid using the action button on the right hand side, or I can go and send, so mark as paid by using receive payment, or I can send a reminder, send a new copy, get a share link, print, all these sort of options, even delete if I need to. That's my sales area. Expenses area, really straightforward. 
this is going to give me a breakdown of all the expenses I've already got in. Now, in this case, I've used my bank account and I've attached my bank account and got all the data in there. Or I've used my mobile phone and I've used the receipt capture functionality to use this camera here, take a photo of what it is I need and then bring it from there. Works an absolute dream. Highly recommend doing it. I'll try and put some bit up here kind of showing you how that's working, but it's amazing. Works really well. Use what's called OCR technology to bring that data in for me. So I'm really happy that the data in here is really going to be accurate. So if I need to go through and make any changes, this is where I can see them. I can see what expenses I've done. I can even go into individual suppliers, find a supplier like the Cocktail Geeks as I've got here and see what transactions relate there. And the idea then, then I can click into them and then go here. Now this page here is called an expense. Very similar to that sales invoice. The top left hand corner is going to be the supplier. Then it's the payment to where the payment was come. Direct to current account in this case, I'm saying I've paid for it personally. Payment date is the payment date. Entertainment, I put on here the amount and VAT. Again, if you're not VAT registered, don't worry about it. But I put VAT in this one to help me. And I've even used a copy here of the receipt that I've done. So I took a photo of it, again, using my camera. And I was able to bring this in nice and straightforward. The idea of having those attachments there means that you're always going to have that digital copy of it wherever you are. And from HMRC's point of view, it's going to work an absolute dream having that data there. Now, before we go to the bank, which is the most important bit, let's quickly look at what else we've got. Reports in here, I can run all manner of reports. For example, profit and loss account. Profit and loss account, if I do it by all dates, by using the date functionality at the top here, press run report, it's going to tell me how much sales I made and how much expense I've had. And currently, oops, what loss I'm making at this point in time. If I then go to um, other reports in here, I can look at balance sheet and I can scroll down here. I've got all these manner of reports I can look at if I need to. Taxes, where VAT can be worked from. So you can use this software to be able to deal with your VAT. Payroll is where you can add an extra subscription to run payroll from here as well. You can pay your employees, really, really useful. And on the taxes section as well, if you're a sole trader, it'll also give you a breakdown of what estimate of tax you would want to see or what it believes it's going to be going forward. Now let's go to the most um, important area. Most important area has to be the transactions area with my bank transactions option. For here, you're going to see some really important information. Now, what I would highly recommend everyone does is use the link account functionality, find the bank of your choice, and from that bank of choice, follow the instructions and attach your bank directly to QuickBooks. Because what that will mean is all the data in that bank will then start flowing through into QuickBooks itself. Brilliant. What do we do with that data though? So, well, let's say I've got three transactions that come through. You can see the transactions here. Intuit, paying this QuickBooks account. Sky Mobile, paying my telephone bill. And Squarespace, paying for my website. What do I do with them? Well, the clever thing is QuickBooks is already thinking what it relates to. And your most important thing is making sure it's for, forward of it soon. Now, first thing to note is this is on the For Review tab. The For Review tab, shown just here, is basically the items that QuickBooks are aware of that it's got from a bank feed or you've uploaded via a bank statement. And QuickBooks knows about them but hasn't yet put them into QuickBooks. And you'll notice there's a free button here. That free button is basically indicating we have free transactions we need to deal with. Now, when we deal with the transactions, they're going to move from For Review into Categorized. Now, from For Review to Categorized is basically saying that you've seen what the transaction is and you've agreed with it or you've made adjustments, you've put it in there. If I click on categorize, I've got all these transactions are already in QuickBooks. And from here, I can actually make adjustments to them as well. If I say, actually, I shouldn't have put this card subscription to there and I should have put it somewhere else, I can change it from here. It's gonna make my life so much easier. Or I can undo it, put it back into full review and then go from there. Basically, the transactions in categorized are the transactions that you've added to QuickBooks. So if I run a VAT return or run a report, they're the ones that are gonna appear there. For review though, well these are transactions we need to deal with. The simplest way to deal with them is to click into the transaction. From here you get this page just like this and basically before you press this add button here, you just need to make sure you're comfortable that everything's right. If you're not VAT registered, don't worry about the VAT side of things. I've left this for no VAT for this one. So if I was going to put 20% VAT on, it will then prompt me, do I always want this to be 20%? I go choose a category, Use the drop down arrow or start typing to find what category it relates to. Subscription sounds good to me and I'm happy with that one. And basically it's saying that this Intuit me paying for QuickBooks, have I paid for this correctly? Once I'm happy with it, I press the add button and notice how I now only have two transactions. This amount in QuickBooks is dis 
gone down because I've just added another transaction and now that's in my categorized area. This one here, Sky Mobile, you notice it's got a rule applied. What that rule means is QuickBooks has seen me adding this a few times, suggested a rule for me, said this telephone, and am I happy with it? I'm very much happy with it. You can even make it auto add. So it doesn't ever even appear on full review, it goes straight in there if you need to. Happy with that, press add. And then my final one, subscriptions here. Exactly the same, am I happy with the category? Am I happy with the VAT? Am I happy with the memo that's here? I can change all these. I even have the chance to look at matching as well. If you've already added it to QuickBooks and maybe it's the sales invoice, for example, we add that 1,200 pound, then you can match against it so that it doesn't double count. I can also go down here and add an attachment directly here, create a rule based on this transaction, or in a very few circumstances, I can exclude it. You would only ever use exclude if there's an error in there as well. Final bit of advice for you is a split functionality. That means that not all this would go to subscriptions, maybe some to subscriptions, some to computer expense, for example. I could use a split functionality and split it accordingly. But this one though, I'm happy, I press add. Most important thing is I get a big tick here. That tick tells me that I've added everything. Again, if I was on a live client, the bank balance and the inquit book would both show and I'd expect both of them to be the same. £179.68, give me confidence everything is okay. Finally, though, the last thing you'd ever want to do is reconcile. Reconcile is basically you go out in a bank statement, telling QuickBooks what that figure is, making sure they both agree. And when they do agree, that means that you can set it and forget about it because then you're going to have confidence everything's been added correctly. And there we have it. There is QuickBooks in 10 minutes. Yes, it's been quick. Yes, it's been easy. But this should be all you need to know to get yourself started in QuickBooks. Make sure you attach that bank. Make sure you understand how to send a sales invoice. Make sure you use that receipt capture data to get lots of data in. Once you've got those three nailed, you're on the races to making sure that your account is set right. And if you need more information about the world of QuickBooks, you're in the right place. So make sure you use that subscribe button, use that like button, and let me know in the comments below if there's anything else you really need help on within QuickBooks Online. My name's been Adam Patrick. This video has been an absolute pleasure to do for you, and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now. Don't you wait.